Hi everyone, here's a 50 year old patient who has a high hyperope. He depends on glasses for everything, for far, intermediate, near. He needs glasses 100% of the time. He came in looking to decrease his dependence on glasses. LASIK was not my first choice given that he's both presbyopic and a high hyperope. Even if we performed LASIK and achieved a great result for him initially, Within a few years, he would probably need a laser touch-up or RLE to deal with the ongoing changes of his aging natural lens, as well as the regression of his laser vision treatment. Therefore, we chose to do RLE or refractive lens exchange for him. With RLE, the lens can be so soft that the lens can be aspirated with little to no ultrasound energy. The lens may even be too soft to crack, but I usually still create grooves since the grooves provide space allowing the lens to fold on itself. One groove is sufficient, but you can certainly create two if you want. I typically cut my sculpting energy in half, for example, down to 30 torsional from a typical 60 or 70 for a cataract. After grooves are created, I use the phaco probe to aspirate the peripheral lens centrally. And as you see, the grooves act like a crease serving as a point of flexion, allowing the peripheral lens to fold and be brought centrally. Without grooves, there is no debulked area around which the lens can fold or flex so that you can bring the peripheral lens centrally. If you're unable to fold the lens, you would need to prolapse the entire lens into the anterior chamber, which could also work. Alternatively, one can debulk the central lens with the INA handpiece from the very start. RLE is a very safe surgery with good technique, but not without risks. Young, pre-posterior vitreous detachment patients especially are at higher risk for retinal tears or detachments from vitreous traction after surgery. So thorough examination of the retina after surgery is paramount. I considered a multifocal lens for this patient since multifocal lenses provide the maximum range of vision allowing patients to see far intermediate, and near vision all without glasses. But they do so at the expense of overall quality of vision that these healthy eyes are used to. Specifically, these patients may have decreased contrast sensitivity, decreased vision performance in low light, and increase in unwanted dysphotopsias at night, which are halos, starbursts, and glare around lights at night. Pros and cons of these lenses need to be discussed at length with patients before surgery. This patient wasn't opposed to using readers for near small print only and mostly wanted freedom from glasses while driving or using his computer. So I didn't want to sacrifice the quality of vision in exchange for maximum range of vision. Therefore, I chose the LAL Plus for this patient since I felt with the light adjustable lens, even with both eyes targeted for far, we could achieve excellent far and intermediate range vision. This patient did great and achieved 20-20 vision for both far and intermediate range vision. He only needs readers when reading very small print. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.